Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I genuinely love their online learning community because there are thousands of classes on topics like video editing, painting, and self-care. It's a great place for anyone looking to learn new skills or start a whole new career. It's been a while since I painted a portrait in oils, so I decided to watch Christy Gordon's portrait painting from a photo class to refresh my memory. I love how clearly she breaks down the steps and even shows you how to mix colors for each part of the face and hair. If you want to take this class or any others, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hi friends, Brett and I were so thrilled to be able to take our belated honeymoon in Italy that we postponed in 2020. It was a blessing in disguise, as we were able to save up more for it, and now I get to share glimpses of it with you all. We visited three different cities, and I was able to do a watercolor sketch in each one. So we spent the first day sightseeing, admiring the architecture, visiting historical sites like the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Pantheon, and of course enjoying the food. My nana on my father's side was Italian, so I've dreamed of visiting Italy for as long as I can remember. And finally being here didn't feel real at first. I've also spent the past few years learning Italian on my own, but I was only really good enough to have conversations about ordering food. The next day, I focused on finding a place to do a watercolor painting. It seemed like every corner and street was painting worthy. However, I've learned from my past plein air attempts that finding an area that's less crowded, shaded, and with a place to sit is important too. Eventually, I decided on an interesting outdoor seating area in the Piazza dei Serpenti that encapsulated lots of the charming aspects of Roman architecture I enjoyed. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous painting in such a populated area in a new country. But, as is usually the case, everyone was friendly and didn't really bother or pay any attention to me at all, which I always appreciate as an introvert. Having this handheld watercolor palette and clip-on water cups was incredibly helpful to traveling light with my supplies and being able to set up anywhere I wanted.
want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I love their platform for so many aspects of my art career. Even while I was out of the country, I was able to edit my online store, to update shipping times, and keep track of my inventory. Another one of my favorite features is their online portfolios and galleries. They make it so easy to display your work in a professional way. They also offer print-on-demand extensions that can help you start selling your art without investing in things like a printer or packaging supplies right away. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ashley King to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I spent almost an hour on this watercolor sketch, and most of that time I worked on simplifying all the details of the restaurant seating. It's definitely my favorite part of the piece, and I'll admit I rushed through the rest before we had to leave. But I'm glad I got the chance to capture this memory in a painting. Now that I'm back home, all the sounds and feelings of being in Rome come rushing back to me when I look at this sketch. It's incredible how much more intertwined those emotions are with this painting than with the thousands of pictures I took. So I highly recommend doing a quick sketch the next time you are out exploring too. Before we left Rome, we had some amazing pizza in front of the Colosseum and then headed back to our hotel to check out. We of course grabbed one last gelato and 
boarded our train to Florence. Thanks for joining my art journey today. Wishing you the best, and I'll see you soon. Hi friends, we're continuing our Italy trip with a short stay in Florence. This might have been my favorite city of the three that Brett and I visited. The Renaissance influence on architecture and art filled the streets, and many areas had a charming neighborhood feeling. I'm glad you're joining me today. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We began our trip with a visit to the Galleria dell'Accademia. It was full of incredible paintings from Florentine artists made during the 13 to 1600s and is also home to Michelangelo's David sculpture. This is about as much of it as I can show on here, but it was unbelievably detailed and such a wonder to admire in person. You can even see every chisel mark he made when you're up close to the sculpture. I did a quick figure sketch and then we explored the rest of the gallery. The way the sunlight filtered through the narrow streets and onto the historic buildings was one of my favorite things about Florence, so I wanted my watercolor sketch to capture that feeling. I felt a lot more confident working on this painting than the one in Rome. Choosing a better composition and strong lighting source always helps me figure things out faster. I left the sunlit parts of the scene in a blank negative space to give a better idea of the strong contrast between light and shadow. I tend to go with my instinct when it comes to color mixing and just use what I see in front of me as a starting point. Doing these urban paintings has taught me to move quickly and not spend too much time thinking, if that makes sense. I found that the more I fake confidence in brush strokes and color choices when I'm really not that sure, the better it turns out. Not to mention that I don't want to keep Brett from continuing exploring for too long, though he is always very patient with me and kindly helps to film these painting scenes.
I love this part of the painting process. The balance of adding smaller details while still keeping them loose is such a challenging task, but when you do it right, it makes the painting feel full of life. Jumping around to different parts of the piece usually helps me not overwork one area. I'm adding in these cast shadows from the window sills, even though the sun has quickly moved across the sky and they're no longer there in person. I actually modified many parts of this painting to make an interesting composition. Adding in elements from the surrounding area that I enjoyed helped satisfy the desire to paint every street corner that I saw. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm in awe of the online store I was able to create on Squarespace. They have so many templates that you simply upload pictures and text to, and you'll be ready to sell in no time. I can also update my gallery of paintings to show clients with their easily customizable online portfolios. They also allow you to link your social media accounts, so you can automatically share website content to your channels. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ashley King to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. We ended our trip with the best pasta I ate in Italy and then hopped on our train to Venice. See you next time.
Hello friends, Venice was the last stop of our Italy trip. The romantic atmosphere of the city, coupled with the signs of elegant decay, were unlike any other place we'd visited before. I was able to make one last watercolor sketch while we were here, completing a trio of works to capture an impression of the entire journey. We spent much of our time exploring the pedestrian-only streets and admiring the quiet canals that seemed to leap straight out of a fairy tale. The most important excursion for us during our short stay in Venice was taking a gondola ride. It was such a relaxing and intimate way to see the city. Once you're away from the busy streets, gliding through the quiet canals transports you to a world of your own, surrounded by astounding architecture and feats of early engineering. I spent the last morning in Venice finding a place to paint. I knew I wanted to capture one of the many bridges over a small canal with some boats floating in the water. Those subject matters became the focal point of this scene, and I tried to keep the other parts of the painting less defined in contrast. Painting wet paints into wet paints helped the background to blur and bleed into each other, giving it the out-of-focus effect I was going for. In comparison to the paintings I did in Florence and Rome, the color palette of Venice felt full of pastels to me, with lemon yellows, light greens, and oranges. This could have been exaggerated by the mostly overcast day, but putting in these washes of colors early on really helps to capture the mood of the scene. I changed the right side of the painting sidewalk to show these wooden beams creating a cast shadow onto the ground. I felt like it helped add more interest to the piece than the brick wall that was originally there. Let's take a quick break to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I use Skillshare's online learning community on a regular basis to explore my creativity and learn new art skills. They have so many classes on things like watercolor painting, video editing, and building better compositions. I always return to Marco Bucci's sketchbook painting classes anytime I'm going to be urban painting during travel. He does an incredible job of explaining all the supplies you'll need and how to use colors to express emotion and capture the feeling of a place. 
His focus on shifting warm and cool colors when painting outdoors has been the biggest improvement to my painting so far. If you want to take this class or any others like it, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Out of the three paintings I made during my trip, this one was the most complicated and difficult to figure out. However, I enjoyed the challenge of painting the water, boat, and its subtle reflections. A breakthrough moment for me in this painting was choosing to merge the shadows of the bridge and the water underneath. I think this helped to simplify that area so it reads more realistically, even though I could see more definition in real life. I'm happy with how this painting turned out, and I feel like it gives off a different atmosphere than my typical urban sketches. I hope you like it too. Thank you so much for joining my art journey in Italy. It was an incredible time and I'm glad I got to share parts of it with you all. I'll be selling prints of all of these paintings I've made in Italy in my shop in the near future, so keep your eyes open for that. For now, I am wishing you the best and I will see you next time. See the back. It's all smooth. Something I never expected to come out of sharing my art journey online has been the increase in confidence in not only my art skills, but in all areas of my life. I haven't always had the strongest sense of who I am and often change things about me to fit in. 
but I want to share how being true to my passions has allowed me to take pride in my work and ultimately myself. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. This is Mango, our new puppy. She is very sweet and kind of crazy still. <laughs> It's been so long since I've done any painting with oils. I've been out of town and I was using watercolor paints and then I've spent the past few weeks editing a lot and we got a new puppy that you saw. So life has been busy, but I'm excited to get the chance this week to paint a ton. I want to do kind of two portraits or figures that work together. One painting for this vlog and then another painting for the next vlog. And I have found some reference photos that I want to use online that I'm going to buy so that I can have really good quality references to work from. I found that that is super important to me getting a painting that I really like. Mango is finally asleep, so I'm going to try to get a few hours of work in. You might see her running around a little. She has a lot of energy still, um, but she has been so much fun. I was a shy person growing up, never one to draw lots of people in, make tons of friends, or want to hold conversations with strangers. There's nothing wrong with being an introvert and reserving your inner self for those close to you that you trust. I'm still very much like this. However, I realized a lot of my reservations stemmed from a lack of confidence in myself as a person. I cared too much about what people thought of me or how they perceived me. I would lie awake at night, replaying conversations I'd had, feeling like I said something weird or wrong. It wasn't until I started sharing my art journey with others that I realized not everyone will like you or your art. They may not even understand you or care that much about you. It's been very freeing to come to terms with this. Artists are faced with the criticism of others about their work, maybe more than any other profession. So learning to accept criticism without spiraling is a necessary part of life. It's allowed me to gather my sense of confidence from within and not from what others think of me.
As one of my favorite artists said in her song Marjorie, never be so polite you forget your power. Never wield such power you forget to be polite. As an Asian woman, I feel like this is something I've struggled with that has hurt my confidence in the past. We often feel like we have to be quiet, demure, and not cause problems. Of course, there is nothing wrong with those qualities, but they can be detrimental when I feel like I can't speak my mind or stand up for myself or my art. Learning to find a better balance between my power and being polite has allowed me to recognize my strengths, acknowledge how hard I work, and be proud of who I am as a person and an artist. Even now, saying I'm proud of myself feels boastful, but I'm working on changing that mindset. I'm using a reference pack that I bought from Howard Lyon that Chelsea Lang recommended in one of her videos. Using high quality photos for this painting has made such a difference. I'm able to find the exact pose I want with distinct light and shadows that are more clear to paint 